Uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for the introduction. Hopefully you can see my screen now. Uh, so we're really excited to be with you this evening and to talk to you uh, about some of the pioneering work that we're doing. Uh, it's based on research that's come out of the physics department at Lancaster University. And it's really a, a game changing solution to, um, to counterfeiting, to anti-counterfeiting. And I'm yeah, thrilled to talk to you about it. Um, so I'm going to start just by giving you a little bit of an introduction as to what quantum technology is. Um, so I, first of all, I mean, I think when anybody hears quantum physics, they, they, they switch off or they think it's some mystical, magical thing. But actually, really, quantum physics just describes the behavior of uh, systems at a, a fundamental level. And quantum technologies aim to harness this to do things that classical devices can't. And there are two kind of prime examples, which are in the news quite often, quantum computers, which may have the ability to be able to uh, exponentially increase uh, the speed at which we can do certain calculations and quantum communication systems, which um, could potentially allow us to basically prevent eavesdropping communication. So two very important technologies. Um, but it's really fair to say that we're still uh, the, the very dawn of uh, this, this exciting new uh, field and uh, we don't know where it's going to go. So, you know, we see this as a tip of an iceberg. We see a huge, exciting plethora of um, you know, new technologies emerging. And to kind of embrace this, um, you know, we were very forward thinking in Lancaster. We started uh, Lancaster's Quantum Technology Center uh, something like uh, eight, nine years ago now with the aim of um, you know, bringing uh, these technologies kicking and screaming into the real world. Um, so I joined the Quantum Technology Center uh, from its inception and I now uh, direct the center. Um, it's really interdisciplinary, despite the fact it sits within physics, and we work with colleagues from across uh, campus and across the university, as you'll, you'll see later on. Uh, and there's an awful lot of uh, exciting things going on. And the second talk from uh, Mike Thompson is also uh, based out of the Quantum Technology Center. Um, and I'll let him tell you a little bit more about, about, about that work. I'm going to focus on um, uh, work which is you know, really central to, to my, uh, I guess my, my passion, my reason for being. Um, I, really like the, uh, I really like solving real world problems. And for me, one of the biggest problems in the world today is uh, keeping our digital system secure. Uh, and it's clear that uh, current solutions just don't do a good enough job, particularly when it comes to things like internet of things devices. So the small light pieces of electronics that we have in our houses in our everyday lives, which, uh, unfortunately, uh, have, have very little security. And so we're developing uh, you know, a, a whole uh, suite shop of different technologies which can be applied in various different ways to secure these devices using uh, quantum technologies. But um, what we're going to talk about tonight is slightly different, and it's an anti-counterfeiting technology that came up uh, originally out of an almost casual conversation between myself as a physicist and a, and a computer scientist. Um, and I really like talking to you about this topic because it's, for me, it, it really embraces this concept of harnessing our resources. If, if we don't talk to each other as scientists studying different disciplines, then we don't discover the needs of, uh, uh, of different disciplines and we can't uh, you know, work together to find solutions. And for me, this embodies, uh, I guess, such a, such a solution. So... Uh, Phil's been very good and made me very quiet so far. Let me let me introduce my co-founder, uh, Philip Speed. Let's say hello, Philip. Hi there. Nice to uh, meet you all today. Thanks thanks for having me. So as Rob's intimated, I'm uh, I'm Rob's business partner, so I'm the commercial end of the business. Um, don't know whether you want me to say any more at this stage, Rob, or you want to kick on. Well, I I, I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about how we founded Quantum Bay. So we we first met in 2013, so nine nine years ago now. Uh, and we were introduced through the university through its uh, business development uh, team um, because it was clear to me that the research that we were doing could be commercialized and it would be wasted if the potential from it wasn't realized. Um, but then equally, it's also clear that as an academic, I'm not necessarily the best person to join those dots to um, you know, liberate the technology. And that's where Phil came in. And I don't know, you presumably you have a, a perspective that comes from a slightly different angle. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about your story about how you came to the university and we came to meet Phil. Yeah, no, happy. So, so happy to do that. Thank you. So as a technologist, as Rob's intimated, key moments of inflection on market transitions happen all the time within the technology sector. 
and I uh, have been in the technology sector what must be 35, 40 years now. So, so quantum technologies for me was another moment of inflection or a market transition. And as a result of that, it was really interesting to get right at the front end of that market transition and help to shape the strategic direction of travel of the market. So, so working with one of our great and our good scientists, um, you know, it seemed a very obvious choice to buddy up and then start to work on this journey. And what's been interesting, um, I mean, we've been all over the world with this technology over the last uh, probably eight or nine years, you know, Silicon Valley, et cetera. And, and, you know, being right at the front of that curve, it, it was clear to us both very early on that nobody really had a clue what we were talking about or what we wanted to do with the technology. Um, and I think there were four quantum security companies on the planet at the time. And now there are four a week pop up. So, so it made great sense to me to find, find a guy that I was philosophically compatible with that I could work with for the next eight to 10 years, standard lifetime of a, of a startup is eight years. We're high tech, deep tech and quantum. So we're much longer than eight years. And, you know, to find one of our great thought leaders. So, that, so it was an obvious natural choice for me to work with Robert at the front end of that curve. Yeah, so we, we got together nine years ago now. We started Quantum Base, and Quantum Base is primarily based on campus. So we have uh, an office on campus, and we, we utilize the, you know, the research and development facilities, particularly in the Quantum Technology Center, also in computing. Um, and we've, we've been on a journey to, to find our first product to market, and, um, and the first product to market is, is one which we've talked about very briefly. It's an, it's an anti-counterfeiting technology, and I think most people don't realize the size and scale of the problem of, of, of counterfeit goods. Um, so, you know, counterfeit goods cost uh, the economy half trillion dollars a year in 2019. But more importantly, people actually die. So if you think about uh, fake car parts, fake aerospace parts, pharmaceuticals, if people are taking a, a, a fake version of the real thing, there's no reason for it to perform as well. In the case of pharmaceuticals, they often don't contain um, you know, active ingredients. And so people die from diseases which could otherwise be cured. And so um, you know, it's, it's a really uh, important problem to solve. And if you think about why existing anti-counterfeiting solutions don't work, it's because they're relatively rudimentary. So existing anti-counterfeiting technologies tend to either be easy to see and easy for the human eye to check and easy for somebody to, to look at and say, well, that looks real, or they tend to be relatively secure. And the problem is that if they're relatively secure, people don't have the sophisticated equipment needed to check that security. And so they don't even notice the security elements. If you look at a banknote or a, a passport, for example, they typically have 15 levels of security, but the average person only really re realizes there are two or three. Um, and so because we're relying on our human senses, which are really not very, not very sophisticated, typical anti-counterfeiting measures, which are actually uh, useful and not, uh, or actually, you know, good and secure are actually not very useful. Um, and so we wanted to break this. We, we wanted to kind of break this paradox and to create a, an anti-counterfeiting solution, which is, which is real and has value and will hopefully completely transform the industry. And um, we've done this using quantum technologies, as you can probably guess. And so we have a, a solution which uses a, a quantum material, so a really thin layer of quantum material, so a thousandth of the thickness of a, a, of a human hair, can be applied to any surface and can be verified with a, a scan of a single smartphone. And we've been working on making the manufacturing process uh, trivial and also the reading process with a standard phone without any additional hardware trivial as well. Um, and I, I guess something that we'll talk about later on is the is the journey from an idea, a concept in a physics lab to actually, uh, you know, dragging something, kicking and screaming into the real world, which is uh, non-trivial. First, let me tell you a little bit about how the solution works. Um, and it's quite cool, I think. I, I, it was a really nice kind of realization on our part. Um, so everything's unique at the atomic scale. Uh, I think I think we can all accept that, you know, if you take two apples, the chance of two apples from the same tree or even, you know, twin twin babies being atomically identical is zero um, or practically zero. Um, but the problem is you can't normally check the authenticity of two objects at the atomic scale. And one thing that's really nice about nanoscale technologies or nanomaterials, quantum materials, is that variations at the atomic scale lead to huge differences at the macroscopic scale. So if you change uh, a sheet of graphene on this uh, on this 
that slide here or a quantum dot by uh, its radius by a, a single atom, then you change the emission color and you can detect that emission color change really, um, really easily. Um, and so we realized that actually if you incorporate quantum materials into the surface coating of a security tag, then you can detect these atomic level variations using a standard smartphone camera. Um, and because they're naturally present, these imperfections, you get a fingerprint, you get a unique signature per device that you uh, manufacture. And so we've been uh, through the process of basically mass manufacturing these security tags in various different forms with various different partners. And obviously we have uh, lots of uh, non-disclosure agreements and things like this. We can't, we can't necessarily talk about uh, the, the partners that we're working with, um, but we're very close to kind of uh, the mass manufacturing side of things. Uh, and when it comes to the kind of the practical implementation, well, this is where the physicist in me um, kind of screams a little bit. You know, it's, 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 it, it, it seems so easy and it seems like the technology should, should just work. So it should be a very trivial journey from having a clever idea to actually implementation. And actually, when it comes to writing a smartphone app that's robust against user error, environment, uh, varying environment conditions, different applications, different operating systems, it's incredibly difficult. And uh, this is the journey we're going on at the moment. Um, if you think about when you measure a, a QR code, for example, we have to do perspective correction, environmental correction, and we have to extract the signature from the QID and from any spurious uh, specular reflection or other, other features. And so we've been developing and patenting the algorithms uh, to do this. Um, but we've uh, we've successfully done that, and this video should show you um, one of the early prototypes. Actually, this video is a, a couple of years old now. We have a much much better, more robust application now. Um, but basically, what the application is doing here is it's reading the signature from the device, but it's also checking to make sure that a quantum material generated that signature, so it can't be fooled with uh, a simple cloning attack. And it does that by probing. Uh, essentially the nonlinear response of the device. So it's a, a little bit complicated, and I won't, won't get into the physics, but it's, it's really nice that it not only provides a unique identity, but it provides a unique identity that can't easily be spoofed. And that's one of the kind of selling points of our um, technology. Um, onto the kind of mass manufacturer, I think maybe Phil, do you want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, bringing our product into the kicking and screaming into the real world? Yeah, absolutely. So there are many different ways to proliferate the technology into the market. One is a, you know, a, a, C, a B2C trans, transition, if you like. But, it, but in terms of scaling, scaling a startup, it made sense to me to find large industry shaping partners that had the critical mass, had the customer base, and were used to dissipating a set of message messages into the enterprise sector. So we we work now with a number of large industry shaping what we might call channels to market. And their role in the process is to produce the tag or the device, however you want to language it, and then sell that to existing and new customers. So, so we, you know, as Rob's talked about the development of the application, the development of the, um, the actual device. So we've had to scale up these partners. So we've had to look at what is the best way to introduce the technology into the existing manufacturing process, because you don't want to introduce latency or any additional processes if you can help it. And it's also a lot simpler for the, for the channel to understand. So introduce it into their existing manufacturing process in a seamless a way as possible. And then, you know, I'm in their sales force with the messages and the um, you know the various different pieces of collateral in order to go and sell that to their existing um, customers and also attack new markets which may be uh, or you know their competitors are, their competitors are ensconced with them. I don't know if you want me to say anything else on that, Rob. Yeah, you that's, wanna... that's, that's that's good. I mean the, the the picture in the top right corner here is is realistic of the current manufacturing techniques that we're using to make the QID. So we use real to real printing. And the materials are actually incorporated in, a, in a, an existing clear coating. So we're not actually interrupting the manufacturing process in any way. Um, and then we've had to do some work to uh, repurpose essentially the existing machine vision systems in the factory so that the identities that are locked into each tag can be recorded and put into a database or a, a distribution ledger. Uh, and then, you know, checked later on uh, after they've been scanned with a, with a smartphone. Um, yeah, very good. Um, and of course, 
one thing that's been really important to us in terms of in terms of a resource as a small company has been intellectual property. Um, and maybe I'll say something about the university's uh, help that we've had in terms of filing patents and uh, and protecting the uh, you know the inventions that we've made. We have a, a whole uh, well we've got a small folder now of of patents which have been granted or in in the process of being granted in various different uh, territories. Um, I think probably approaching twenty uh, kind of unique uh, patents and and you know fifty actual filings, something something of this ma uh, order of magnitude now, covering all sorts of different elements of making tags of reading tags and uh, uh, and various different methods and, and as a small company who's trying to attract investment um, so that we can actually employ people to develop products actually patents have been incredibly useful to us because they give the company value there's something tangible that we we own and that we we you know we actually can uh, kind of bet against which is uh, which is really good um, this is a, a use case in the in the pharmaceutical space, and Phil, maybe I can hand over back to you again to talk about this. Yeah, yeah no, happy to, mate. So, um, the biggest crime, as Rob's intimated, the biggest crime in the world today is counterfeit pharmaceuticals. So, it's a half a trillion dollar a year crime, but perhaps more importantly, or arguably more importantly, it kills people, and usually in the underdeveloped world. So what, uh, what we've done is we're actually incorporating all the hypotheses to incorporate this within the arguably the sugar coating or the coating of the pill. And that gives the ability for anyone anywhere to check the authenticity or legitimacy of a pharmaceutical product in real time with nothing more than a standard smartphone. There are lots of other ancillary benefits. So if, as an example, if you scanned um, a bowl full of pills, you could look for cross compatibility. Is it okay to take the pills at the same time? But the underlying use case for want of a better expression is to help prevent and eradicate the, um, the counterfeit pharmaceuticals. As Rob's also intimated, you can do this in real time. So that has real world benefits of upsell, resell, creating communities of interest, rapid feedback on a global basis for a drug trial. So there are lots of ancillary benefits, but in this particular use case, it's about er helping to eradicate anti-counterfeit products in real time. Very good. Um, and maybe just, uh, I, I wanted to just reflect on the, the journey that we're taking a little bit, certainly in terms of harnessing the, the resources that are available to us at the university. So we established the company in 2013, um, this was kind of underpinned by intellectual property. Um, we took investment based on this. Uh, and we very quickly kind of attracted lots of attention because what we were doing was quite different to what others were doing. And we were quite early in, the, I guess, the quantum technology commercialization space. We were chosen by uh, the Royal Society as part of their Labs to Riches uh, program, which is, uh, you know, really, really nice boon. Um, we developed our... Um, tag and we kind of had our first intellectual property around the uh, the QID so this this uh, unique identity we showed that off at the Royal Society we've had an awful lot of support from the Royal Society but their um, summer science exhibition is a really amazing event if you haven't been as a as a visitor I really recommend it um, but as an exhibitor it's an absolutely amazing experience you have an intense week of, uh, of, of you know science curious uh, members of the general public just bombarding you with questions and enthusiasm but you also attract a huge amount of interest from um you know politicians from leaders of the business world and from uh, news outlets so we've you know reached millions and millions of people by uh, exhibiting some science exhibition and if anybody interested if anybody's watching is interested in exhibiting uh, really happy to talk to us talk to you more specifically about that experience and and help you with that um, and then more recently, we've been kind of moved into the kind of higher, higher TRLs, technology, technology resonance levels of so working out kinks in terms of mass producing tags, in terms of getting applications which can be used by, uh, you know, any, anybody off the street without, you know, needing to read a manual, how to use it first. Um, and, and really, um, you know, signing uh, commercialization agreements with various different customers and working on um, new products for them so it's a really exciting uh, future for this technology we're aiming to you know target this half trillion dollar uh, market and if we can take even a small share of that i think we'll have been very successful and really really looking forward to to seeing that kind of bear its fruits in the next uh, few years i uh, i just wanted to end with a little reflection on 
again on this this theme of harnessing our resources obviously i've i've kind of more or less focused on the the first bullet point here which is the internal one as an academic so how do we harness the ideas that we come up with and how do we actually make impact from the research that we're doing and that's something that's i'm really impassion really passionate about but i also wanted to touch on the university level i feel actually very uh, thankful for all the help we've had across campus so um, the uh, research uh, enterprise and innovation team phil and i wouldn't have met if they hadn't have introduced us the press team have been amazing in terms of publicizing the work that we've done we've been involved in all sorts of uh, outreach events and uh, the events team are fantastic stakeholder relations operations and we also work across faculty as well. So we've had some help from FAS and uh, FHM. And, and so it's really, I think, very important, you know, for, for, uh, for somebody who's seeking to, you know, make the best use of our resources to look broader than your, your department or, or even your faculty. Um, and I guess UK wide as a quantum base, we've had, uh, you know, a huge amount of uh, advantage through uh, research grants, innovation funding, tax relief uh, investment schemes, and some uh, support from different government departments. And then of course, worldwide, we've had some fantastic press coverage, we have some collaborations and, and some research and development with some of the largest uh, Silicon Valley uh, companies, which has been fantastic. So uh, I guess my final message is the future is really bright and hopefully you'll see our anti counterfeiting technology on a phone near you very soon. Uh, thanks very much and really happy to welcome any questions.